Uh, David, when were you first aware of that remarkable statement on the website of the Māori Party? Well, morning, Sean. Look, about a month ago, um, somebody pointed it out to me. They apparently only posted it uh, at the beginning of August. Uh, and so we wrote on the 23rd of August when we found out uh, to Ming Foon, the Race Relations Commissioner, asking what he made of it all and uh, challenging him to make a statement that it's wrong. Did he do anything? Has he done anything to remove, and I'm sorry in anyone's book, to claim a genetic superiority for one race over another is, I mean, the very essence of racism. Has Ming Foon actually done anything about this? No, we've had uh, extensive back and forth. So he wrote back and said, oh, well, they were, they were just trying to uplift themselves and, um, you know, that, that there is a limit to um, funding of Maori sport anyway, so, the, you know, the policy was necessary and maybe they could have phrased it in a better way um, and that he would talk to the Maori party about this. Uh, so we wrote back and said that's not good enough. Just in the last few days at that point, and this was now September 9th, uh, you have publicly and openly decried uh, various politicians and actions in local party elections. Why can't you come out against this clear-cut case? Uh, and he said, uh, wrote back again on the 14th of September and said, oh, well, you know, I intend to talk to Te Pāti Māori about this. Um, well, you know, yesterday was the 28th. We'd had enough. Uh, obviously, his methods were ineffective. We gave him the benefit of the doubt. Website hadn't changed. And uh, so we, we raised it in Parliament. Uh, what sort of reaction did you get? Did you get called a racist? No, amazingly not. I think even some of the people in the Labour side were watching carefully and thinking about it because uh, even they accept that this is just totally beyond the pale. Uh, it's just not acceptable. You know, in New Zealand in 2022, a, a country that is almost defined by the pursuit of equality from... You know, the treaty that was ahead of its time to Kate Shepherd, to you know, the Declar Universal Declaration of Human Rights signed by Peter Fraser in 1945. Uh, we've always been a country that prided itself on, on treating people as we find them. Uh, so, you know, I think there's some pretty broad acceptance. The Maori Party, of course, are in hiding because they've also got a problem with John Tamiri's election uh, donations. So they haven't responded yet, as far as I know. All right, so no response for them, no meaningful response from Ming Foon, who I would agree spends much time telling us to be better people and not to be racist. I am going to put the counterfactual or, or, or play devil's advocate here, though, David Seymour, in the context of where this is on the website. Could we not see it as a little bit of, I don't know, good-natured chest-thumping by the Māori Party, who, after all, are unashamedly saying that they are a party based on ethnicity and race and, and they do want to build up Māori people and, and I guess make them prouder and more resilient collectively. Well, of course, every event of racial prejudice in human history has happened in a context uh, with an excuse or a supposed reason. Uh, it's really just a question of what context or reason they use. I don't think that saying, oh, well, it's just our sport policy, it's a bit of a laugh, uh, justifies introducing the idea of racial supremacy into our society. I think that's something that we have fought for centuries to get rid of, from ending slavery to you know, women having the vote to having racial equality in high schools in the US. I mean, all of Western history has been about beating out the idea that some people have different rights from others. Mm. So, yep, you can say, look, they're having a laugh, they're just trying to raise up our sports achievement, sure. Um, but, of course, you, you know, there's all, every bit of prejudice has been justified by some sort of purpose. Mm. Well, you're uh, Māori, David, then. Uh, isn't it nice to think you might be genetically superior? Well, I can tell you, Sean, that um, uh, it's true I am part Māori and uh, none of my sporting experiences have, have proven their point, I'm so safe All right. to say. Well, let's stay on the issue of race because the other story, though I, not, I noted has not had much coverage in the legacy media, is one of your MPs being told by uh, Kelvin Davis, Labour Minister, that she isn't quite Māori enough. Well, it was a lot more explicit than that. Karen Shaw is uh, MP. She's Maori. She's Napui like me from up north. Grew up in Kaio. 
in Northland, and uh, she was told that uh, she might fuck a papa Māori, but uh, she grew up in a Pākehā world and she needs to cross the bridge of Te Tiriti to understand the world. Well, um, here's, a, here's a question. In what world um, do, do government departments not have to hold their contractors accountable for delivering results for taxpayer money? Because that's actually what Karen was asking about. I and mean, let's just remember, there was actually a point to the question she was asking at the time. But putting aside the government failing to deliver good services and everything, because we know about that, um, I think it's another example on top of this being Foon fiasco uh, of how New Zealand has come so or sunk so far in terms of race relations. Because just this week, uh, Sir Keir Starmer, the Labour opposition leader in the UK Parliament, suspended one of his MPs for saying that Kwasi Kating, the, the new um, British finance minister was, quote, superficially black and not a real black person because he went to Eton. Now, you know, that's obviously a, a, a pretty stupid comment. I think it's a lot milder than what Calvin Davis said. The difference is Keir Starmer uh, suspended this MP from the Labour caucus, made them apologise, and they have offered a fulsome apology. Um, under Jacinda Ardern, I suspect that there will be absolutely no consequences whatsoever for Calvin Davis, and it really worries me that New Zealand's respect for the in inherent dignity of each individual person has sunk so low that it's OK to beat up on a person's identity so long as you're on the right side of the argument. OK, so you would like an apology from Calvin Davis or Karen Wood, and you think one is due? Absolutely. I think that Calvin Davis should reaffirm that New Zealand is a country with universal human rights, that each of us are a thinking and valuing individual. We shouldn't be belittled in going about our work uh, for being Maori or not Maori or not the right kind of Maori. I mean, that, that stuff. We're New Zealand is not the best New Zealand can be. I just think we can do better than that. And I don't think the deputy leader of the Labour Party should be able to get away with that with no consequence. And uh, if the Jacinda Ardern won't give them a consequence, I hope that more and more voters will. All right. And on the other issue, this issue of it's a known fact that Maori genetic makeup is stronger than others. Um, what would you like to see the Maori Party do? And if they did say, oh, okay, bro, fair cop, and they and they take that down, would that satisfy you? Yeah, absolutely. Look, everyone makes mistakes and you've got to give them the benefit of the doubt. They should take it down. I haven't checked this morning if they have after No, it's there. It's no, still there. It, it, it's still there, isn't it? Yeah, it would be the right thing to do. It would be the right thing to do for New Zealand just to show that, you know, we actually are trying to build a better country, uh, that we don't buy into this kind of stuff. But unfortunately, again, if, if the Maori Party can't uh, do some consequences for themselves, then uh, let's just hope that more and more voters do, because mm. it would be a real shame to see that kind of thinking growing in popularity in New Zealand. Uh, liberal democracy is too valuable to see that happen. Mm. Now, I know you've got another appointment to get to, David, so just one final question, though. On this issue of the Maori Party funding, we have about a half a million dollars that has been channelled via uh, the National Urban Māori Authority and Te Waipara Trust to John Tamahiri, uh, by the way, of interest-free loans for the specific purpose of supporting his mayoral campaign and supporting the Māori Party, Te Pāte Māori. Uh, John Tamahiri says because that has all been above board in terms of we have those loans were never hidden or anything else, he says that's fine. Come at me. The Charities Commission is having a look at it. What is your view? Well, I, I hesitate to give you my Bush lawyer view of it, yep. but I just make a couple of observations that, that any person would would make, including a you know just a dumb electrical engineer like me. Um, number one is that charities have to have a charitable purpose, and if you don't subscribe to that, then you can lose your charitable status, as happened to Greenpeace and I think Family First, if I remember rightly. Um, so, you know, the, 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 this political campaigning is not a charitable purpose. Uh, they deserve to lose that, and I've read that they may face a tax bill for all the tax that they're exempt from as a charity if they lose that status. It would be a lot of money, tens of millions perhaps. Second of all, uh, there's the not just the charities law, but the electoral law. Uh, the electoral law says, among other things, that only a party secretary can borrow money on behalf of a party. Now, John Tamahiri has been recorded as giving money uh, to the Māori Party in the electoral returns 
But my question is, well, was it his money to give or should he have declared that he was actually a transmitter on behalf of another entity? Again, um, you know, just my dumb electrical engineer's legal perspective. But So don't take it with a grain of salt. But those are the kinds of questions that I hope will be asked and answered uh, in the coming weeks and months because, you know, again, we don't have a problem with electoral law in New Zealand. We have a problem uh, with um, chumps that keep trying to break it. Yeah, I just want to check too, we've had New Zealand First in its court case, we've got the Labour National Court case, we've got the stuff with, with, with Tamahiri. Are ACT involved in any investigations into your funding or donations? No. The one thing that the ACT Party has in common with the Greens is that we're the two parties that aren't in court uh, under the electoral law. And look, Sean, it's, it's very simple. I mean, you know, we raise money by saying to people, look, you don't give us money because we say what you like. You give us money because you like what we say. And there's no shortage of New Zealanders who support X values for this country and are prepared to give us cash. We don't need to cheat. Uh, we just appeal to people on the basis of our values and uh, it works out for us. So uh, I don't understand why other parties... Uh, so, it sounds a little like the platform, the David. And I must say, it is nice to have you on. Um, despite the shrill insistence oh, well. of other media that, that we're, we're, <laughs> we're the devil incarnate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, don't, don't worry about that. As I tried to explain to them, um, look, I, I think um, at the end of the day, even if you disagree with them, it's probably better to have dialogue than cancellation. And um, if they really think that um, your views on that issue are, are, are a true story of national importance, then pretty soon the platform will be outrating them. Well, that is the idea. David Seymour, I thank you very much indeed for making time for us on a busy morning and those are important issues that are raised. That is the ACT uh, Party no. leader, David Seymour. Um, and, he, and he says, I am not. I am not genetically superior. But the Māori Party, and I'm just going to read the quote for you again. This is on Te Pate Māori. It's on their website. Um, it is a known fact that Māori genetic makeup is stronger than others. Now, I just know if anyone but a Māori had said that about their race, or it was Pākehā, or you insert the word, I don't know, German, um, you would get quite a different reaction from the Race Relations Conciliation